Hey, how are we doing, boys and girls? Welcome to the video. So today on Solo DMZ, we've got two things we want to cover. One, I want to just show you this nice clip at the start because I know you guys like the the exfil camping video I put out. Here is another one where I deal with another team of three who were camping at the exit. Now, I'm presuming they was at the exit. It could just be the fact that you were just clearing the stronghold there, for example, and I came along. But they were at the exit. As soon as I called it in, they started shooting on me. And uh, we deal with them. And uh, it was a good one. We, we, we made some good plays. We put out, um, used all our equipment we could use to go, take them on. Because I was caught in a really sticky situation. So enjoy that. And then after that, I'll then cut to the controller settings. Just go through my actual controller settings. And then we'll go over some things in the private match. Just talking more about uh, a few things you can do to try and improve uh, on your aim as a controller. Things like crosshair centering how to abuse the aim assist and if you've been watching my streams you'll most probably know about this and um yeah we're going to be talking about a few things like that so enjoy boys and girls thank you so much for watching appreciate all the support i'll see you soon for some more dmz right let's get this going not a bad game actually it's been all right oh hello we're not in a good position here. This is not great. Oh my god. Let's put this down. We need cover. We need something to help us out here. Oh, it's got one of them. Alright, he's down, he's down, he's down, he's down, he's down. Right, plate up, plate up, plate up. We use this side as cover since we've got the uh, score streak helping us. Let's push up. Use this as cover. This guy's put a freaking turret down himself. I'm just worried about this guy pushing. The thing is, he has got. I have got the turret covering me. I think that's why he's not. Oh, just nearly. I think that's why he's uh, not pushing. Oh no, he's he's done a flank. Right, he's down. Now I could possibly leave here, but I'm going to take these guys on. Uh, PV's pushing. Let's push up with the truck. Yeah. PvE, leave me alone. This is not the time, dudes. Bloody bots. Right, he's down. One more left. Oh. He's dropped plates. Let's grab him. We need them. More cars coming in. Please be PvE. Please not be another people. People. Uh, enough people. Sorry, that's good. Good, good, good. Where's this other one? He's there. Ah. What are you doing, Cheeky? No, 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 you're not getting them up. All right, I hope you enjoyed that clip. That was an absolute corker of a clip. I enjoyed that one against those guys. Anyway, settings for you. Going to go on to edit button layout first. Now, this is going to be something you need to change. I 100% advise you to change this if you are using a normal controller. If you're using a scuff controller, paddles on the back, up to you how you have that layout right but i just want to kind of encourage you to always be able to aim with your right stick right at all times whenever you're doing things in terms of movement and i when i say movement like diving changing stance you know taking cover using cover to your advantage when you're doing that type of stuff you want to be, a, be able to have control of your aim at all times right so you can adjust easier ready to pop out of cover to shoot people things like that right send you know cross their centering and all that kind of thing so if you're using a scuff controller on that this is mostly fine i have the paddles on the back myself you know i have jump and slide on the back so i have the default because they're the only two um, movement things i want to kind of touch the most mainly the dive and this is what we're going to talk about here so if you go to edit button layout go to the um preset change it to tactical okay Thank me later. It's going to help you so much, right? Tactical, the only thing it's going to do is put it so your dive, turn, slide, change stance, all that kind of thing is now on the right stick, the same stick you use for aiming. You just got to click it, okay? And then you put your melee on the circle button where your crouch was. This may take a day or so to get used to, but it's going to help you greatly because you can now 
maintain your aim and maintain control of your aim while changing the stance while diving out the way you know while sliding to cover things like that right and i like i said i encourage using cover at all times yeah you know if you you won't try and catch me out in the open you know i'm going to be using cover as much as possible especially against the pve because those those they're absolute savages you know you just come out of nowhere and start shooting at you if you're out in the uh, if you're out in the open that's it you're dead right so tactical is really handy for that you can you utilize cover a lot more dive into cover a lot more while maintaining aim absolutely a must if you're running a default type of controller basic normal controller yeah all right anything else here if i don't mention certain things if i skip certain things it's just because it's a preference thing it's not going to affect gameplay at all and so it's more of a preference to you on your setup okay so if i skip certain things that's because of that so all this is preference stuff like the controller vibration trigger effect some people say it affects your aim it doesn't affect my aim i just don't like vibration i just don't want it all going shaking on me when i'm in a fight right it it could affect your aim possibly but to me it didn't really affect my aim i it's just more of a preference thing but this is why i was just left these at it is now aiming I would advise when it comes to the sensitivity, stick it anywhere between a 4 to around a 7 or 8. If you're going any higher, it's going to take you a bit more effort to have more control, especially at those longer ranges, right? Because you're going to get into a lot of gunfights, and a lot of times you do get into longer range gunfights, right? That's not all close quarters. So you want something which you'll be able to deal with close quarters very easily, but still maintain decent accuracy at the further ranges so this is why i've gone with a 5.5 five. for me that's perfect it's not too fast it's not too slow and i can control my recall nice and easily and i can control tracking nice and easily at the further ranges and this is why i also got my sensitivity multiplier ads sensitivity multiplier at 0.65 this basically means that i can track people again nice and easily at the further ranges it's still um, not super low enough where I can't snap towards other, other um, players afterwards. If I've aimed at someone else and then I want to snap to someone else, I can do quite easy just by flicking the stick to the left or right to the next person. It's still fine. 0.65 just makes it feel a lot more control. I have this the same on my mouse, right, with um, the mouse acceleration curve. When I ADS, it halves my sensitivity, basically. So it's the same type of feeling. I just want to have a little bit more of a slowdown when it comes to actually zoning in and aiming at people this also okay after doing some research people are saying and stating and have proved that a lower sensitivity for some reason seems to make the aim assist feel more stickier all right i don't know why most probably something to do with the fact that obviously if you've got a lower sense it's trying to a com you know account to that by still trying to track people moving faster it feels it does feel more sticky when i lower the, the sensitivity a bit more not like a ridiculous amount but it helps so this is why we've got these all set to how we have all right because to be honest if you're using a controller like for, for example myself one of the reasons i want to use controller is the aim assist because the aim assist is very strong in modern warfare too it is very strong it's one of the strongest aim assists in any uh, in the current games at the minute right it's just very very strong and so you want to utilize that as much as possible, right? It's going to give you an easier time. It's going to make you win more gunfights, you know. So that's how we that's how we're rocking this and with the aiming. I haven't changed the multiplier sensitivity multiplier here. It's all one. I don't change anything here. This is all kind of preference stuff until we get down to here. Automatic sprint. You want this off. Basically, when you if you try out any of my shotgun hip fire builds, I have a few people comment or message me saying that they can't hip fire it it like just they just keep sprinting right and they're trying to hip fire it and it gets them killed this is why you want to make sure automatic sprint is set to off it gives you more control out of the any situation when you're in like a building or anything like that and you want to hip fire and you're trying to center your cursor to certain places while hip firing this is why you want that off okay and then you could just control when you need to sprint and automatic and tax sprint sorry okay so i have this off uh, moving on prioritize interact for um easier looting basically so interact reload behavior have it on prioritize interact it just makes it easier to loot pick things up 
um, and then you hold to reload. Now, if you're on um, multiplayer, where you don't need to pick things up, you most probably want to set this back to tap to reload. This is why I have this starred, just because um, these two, I actually change in ranked when I play multiplayer ranked. I have this to tap to reload, and I have this to automatic tax sprint in multiplayer, because I do want to automatic tax sprint, eat when I can around the corner. Yeah, I don't want to jump around the corner and challenge someone. I want to easily go into automatic attack sprint without having to really click anything but in dmz where i want full control out of my movement and it's a more of a slower paced game mode i want to have this off okay and same with prioritizing i wanted to, i want to loot easier because looting is a, a, a more of a fundamental in dmz um so yeah prioritize interact is better for it apply armor plates apply all all right so just applying one applies all if you're you're down two or three um on your armor on your armor slots okay now on to advanced target aim assist you definitely want on you'll be an absolute nutcase if you've had this off aim assist type we have on default you can also go black ops both kind of feel the same to be honest just give them a try we'll see which one you've liked the best both are kind of around the same um i feel like the black ops has better aim assist in the sense of like 1v1s it feels a little bit stickier but default feels a lot more easier to stack towards other players when you're in a pinch, which you are going to have a lot when you go against PvE, right? There's a lot of PvE sometimes huddled up. The default just feels a little bit better for that. In 1v1s, honestly, I think Black Ops has slightly got the edge, but um, I would go for default just for the overall control, okay? I don't touch third person, so I just left that. Dynamic is what you want for your aim response curve. It's a nice s curve um mapping it feels lovely um definitely changes to dynamic this is one i would 100 advise changing to okay now going down a little bit more ads sensitivity transition time change that to instant so it instantly goes to that 0 0.65 which i have it at the minute as soon as i check click on ads time yeah uh, i haven't got a custom sensitivity per zoom inputs is the next important one so we open this up so you got the left stick and your right stick minimums set to 0.3. Why do we have them at 0.3? Now, if you, the reason why is if you increase these, right? So say 25, right? 0.25. Basically, for me to move now on the left stick, I have to push the stick further in, further forward, further left or right, which wherever, whichever direction I'm going, to make it react. If you bring it all the way down. I have to hardly push it forward for it to react. It's just like a more of an instant feeling. And especially with your right stick, with aiming, that's what you want, right? As soon as you get into a fight, you want to instantly be able to flick to someone or instantly be able to uh, adjust your aim towards someone, right? You don't want to have to, like, you know, wait a little bit longer. You have to push it a bit further to get it to react. You know, any every little bit of time, you know, even if it's just like half a millisecond or a millisecond, you want that extra time to be able to shoot right as, as putting you at a disadvantage if you have slower reaction times so you want to have these at the lower as low as possible basically now if you set these to 0.3 yeah 0.03 and you are getting stick drift that's basically if you're just not touching the right stick and it's moving left or right in a certain direction just go to the right stick here up at y1 then look again is it moving yep still moving go to five is it now moving? Nope, stopped moving now. 0.5. Then keep it at 0.5. Yeah, that's how you also count a stick drift when your controllers get a little bit old, older. You do encounter a stick drift on those controllers. And this is how you, you counter it. You can just up it slightly. Just up it by one each time. And then until it stops. Yeah. So I'll keep it all at 0.3. Same with uh, left stick max. 0 0.05, uh, 0.95. I have these at the maximum um, for this. So... Um, the re you could one thing I have dabbled with for the left stick max is bring this all the way down to around 70 to get full movement at less you don't have to push it all the way to the far furthest to get the full movement of going left and right or forward backwards it, it's, it's something you can play about with but honestly just keep these both at 0.95 right this is for me, feels the most comfortable. Left trigger, right trigger, you want at 0.00. 0. 0. 
That basically means that you instantly pull the trigger down. As soon as you pull the trigger down, it instantly starts to ADS or instantly starts to fire. Right? There's no delay. You don't have to push in the trigger further in for it to actually shoot. All right? Again, just making it feel a lot more responsive. The settings here are basically just to try and make the controller feel as responsive as possible. And that's what we're trying to go for here. All right? That's what the input dead zones are for. Right. Controller orientation haven't changed. Gyro, don't use it. And then we come down to here. A lot of this is going to be preference type stuff. So we've got sprint, tactical sprint. We've got this as a toggle. I haven't got auto move forward on. I run single tap run to activate the tactical sprint. And then these ones are important. Ground mantle, automatic airball mantle, automatic ground mantle all off. If you're in a gunfight and you're trying to jump somewhere or jump over something or anything like that and you end up like grabbing something they can get you killed right it's it's been it's really frustrating when it it does this automatic grab in, in especially in gunfights right it just gets you killed this is why i have all these off it doesn't do, do all the all that automatic stuff um again giving you more control over your movement now this one's a really important one inverted slide and dive behavior you want this set to inverted this is, what it's going to do is make it so when you tap R3, because, you know, we're going with you're changing your default thing to, you know, um, tactical, your layout. So when you tap R3 to dive or slide or anything, it just you, you only have to tap it to dive. You don't have to hold it to dive. And diving is more important than sliding. To be honest, you won't slide that much at all in call of duty you shouldn't be sliding it's it's just really bad in modern warfare um so you shouldn't need to slide at all so you'd i'd rather have it um inverted and be able to dive it's just a lot easier all right and then plunging water have it under plunge freely auto parachute off sprinting door bash on i have that on mantle only and then these i haven't really changed too much of um Weapon mount, extra delay and short. I have quick C4 detonation on. It makes it so when you chuck a C4 and you press the R1 again, it detonates it before chucking the next one. Really handy in that mission where you have to blow up people on the cars and also on the helicopter. Really handy for that. Everything else here is pretty much the same. All right. So that is the controls. What we're going to do now is get into a private match because I feel like it's the easiest way of doing this. I've just shown you some routines and things you should start getting used to with your games. All right. Things have really helped improve your aim. All right. So let's get into that now. Free for all. Okay. So this is some of the aiming techniques I want to kind of talk about. And I thought it'd be easier just to do it in a private match where we're not getting shot at anywhere and we can just kind of go for it. Right. Loads of explosions and stuff going off. Right. So. The first thing I want to talk about is crosshair centering. This is something I've noticed um, when I had a, I was watching footage of someone else playing, right? Now, crosshair centering is very important, and it's something I 100% advise doing because it's going to greatly increase your accuracy when you get into gunfights. Now, what am I talking about crosshair centering? Basically, if we're looking, when we're going forward, if you look at my crosshair, it's literally always in the center, ready to kind of be basically pointing at where people are going to be possibly be and i can shoot them directly either in the head or in the body right it's just looking exactly where people can be at all times yeah you see how i'm looking towards like certain corners covering certain angles always having my center cross head right looking up there because there's people up there then looking over here because there could be somewhere here you know you're always having the cross there centered whenever you're going around i see people like this you know like looking around like that so they can see if they obviously see the movement in front of them but then once you get into actually shooting and then got to point up and then start shooting it, it, it cuts your time if you have your crosses just like this and you're going around like this yeah as soon as someone comes in the corner you can shoot them yeah it just gives you that more control instead of coming around the corner and you have to come up and shoot yeah, you, you just go like this. Oh, there's someone there, you know. Oh, someone there, you know. Because you already had your crosshair centered. This is really important and it really actually helps with your aim, improving your aim. So I wanted to mention it because it, it is one of the factors 
unimproven aim is aiming in general isn't just about when you actually get into the gunfight and start to aim i honestly think a high factor of improving your aim is just learning the map and learning about crosshair centering because that is going to improve your aim because you don't have to adjust your aim as much right if i'm already, if i'm look if someone's head glitching here right and i am coming around the corner like so if i'm looking like this and he sees me and start shooting me from over there i have to adjust my aim and then shoot but if i come around the corner i know he's head glitching there and i'm i'm centered like this and i just you can see how much less time it takes and accuracy it takes so i'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have be more accurate to flick and shoot him than to just come around the corner and just shoot where i'm looking yeah so cross their centering something to practice if you have got modern warfare you could do it on a map you you uh know and just practice sending your cross there where people would normally come yeah looking towards certain areas you know just really get into the mindset of having your cross your cross air centered yeah wherever you're going this will really help you um win gunfights a lot more yeah that's the first thing we want to talk about now when it comes to actually abusing the aim assist this is something i wanted to talk about now pretend there's someone here yeah the other thing i watched someone do before when watching their gameplay is they stand still when they're shooting so they come they come around like that, they see someone and they stop then they aim and they shoot yeah you're not getting aim basically you're not getting hardly any aim assist when you do that right if you don't move your left stick if someone like ran if i'm like here right and someone ran across the, str the screen here it would not track them it would not kind of like slightly follow them it would just keep still there'd be no aim assist whatsoever because you're not moving you would get then aim assist a little bit from using the right stick right so if i was stand dead still and then i used the right stick to try and adjust my aim you would get a little bit of aim assist but not all of it you wouldn't get the full rotational aim assist all right you get a little bit but not not much if you use your left stick go over straight in left or right or forward left forward right backward left backward right not directly forward or not directly back but either slightly to the left somewhere or sort of right somewhere yeah that's when the aim assist really kicks in and so when you're getting into gunfights you'll notice i'm always kind of strafing right to move and then i'm also trying to use my right stick just to, to when i strafe to also move a little bit to get the full aim assist rotational aim assist in effect it slows down and really tracks people it's a lot better and it's going to help you when your gun fights a lot more right you want to move when you're shooting move when you're shooting yeah now the reason you also want to do this is strafing in gunfights is going to be a lot harder for them to shoot you and if you're just standing still right if you're just a still target and you get into a gunfight not only are you going to have less aim assist if the person is moving he's going to have more aim assist and he's shooting at a still target if you come around the corner and you're in a fight with someone and you're strafing left and right you're now got full aim assist while moving and being a harder target to hit yeah so what i'm trying to take away with this is always be moving when you're getting into fights right strafing left or right and you don't have to do a you don't have to just be basic go left you know right left right you could go left left right left left right 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 left you want to make your strafing really uh unpredictable too right it's all things to just really help you with your uh movement with throwing off the aim of the other player this is something which comes kind of natural to me because we used to do this a lot in halo um halo was you know all about the strafe a good you'd know someone's a good player in halo because they would strafe they'd be very very good at strafing and they'd do some really weird type of strafe patterns and it it's a, a fps fundamental which you can take around with you from you know to all kind of like games right so make sure you're strafing make sure you're moving make sure you're always moving in gunfights because it's going to help you um keep your aim assist stronger rotation aim is just stronger and uh 
take full control of what the controller has yeah so that is what i wanted to talk about today i feel like this is going to help you out a lot more definitely the crosser centering along with the rotational aim assist abuse where you're moving slightly when you get into gunfights it really will help you out with your aim let me know how you feel about it let me know if it helps you out let me know if you feel like you're winning more gunfights i'd love to kind of hear it thank you so much for watching guys anyway uh, this has been quite a fun one to um, do tutorial wise i quite like doing these type of ones but enjoy thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon for some more dmz